The K21 is among the best in its class. Although it suffered some childhood sickness, this tracked armored infantry fighting vehicle has recovered and now offers better firepower and mobility than its main rivals in the market which led Australia to choose the AS-21 Redback variant. As the weapon detective, we're now investigating the K-21, the soundest option for many countries. The K-21 is a tracked armored infantry fighting vehicle designed for the military requirements of the Republic of Korea Army shortly ROKA, which prioritizes mobility and firepower rather than ballistic protection. Still, it offers high survivability. On the other hand, its AS-21 Redback variant has more similar features to the latest infantry fighting vehicles in the West. In the early 1980s, South Korea initiated the Korean Infantry Fighting Vehicle Program. The fruit of this project, the K-200, was basically a copy of the US AIFV. Yet, the RRKA equipped the vehicle with a 12.7mm machine gun rather than an autocannon. So, its combat capability against enemy armor was not higher than a standard M113 armored personnel carrier. Since the Korean People's Army had armored vehicles with only low ballistic protection and firepower in those years, it was enough for the RRKA's requirements. However, when the USSR collapsed in 1991, the newly established Russian Federation began to sell the latest Soviet equipment to overcome the economic crisis. Russia even gave some BMP-3s to South Korea to pay off its debt. It meant more capable armored vehicles might be available for North Korea. So, in 1999, South Korea launched the Korea Next Generation Infantry Fighting Vehicle Project. The study phase was completed in 2004 and Seoul awarded Tucson DST, now Hanwha Defense Systems, with a contract to develop the new vehicle, initially designated as K300 or XK21 KN IFV. More than 85% of the vehicle was designed domestically. The company delivered the three prototypes within a year. After the trials were completed, South Korea ordered the first batch of vehicles, now called K21, in 2008. The ROKA took the first K21 into service in 2009. Yet, while conducting a river crossing exercise on December 9, 2009, an accident occurred in which the engine stopped due to flooding and the crew had to evacuate. On July 29, 2010, another K21 sank during the training. After investigation, some design flaws were discovered, which would be corrected later. Similarly, some problems were found in the sensors in 2012, which were eliminated gradually. The K21's hull is made of the 2519 aluminum alloy. Some parts of the vehicle, like the hatches, are the S2 glass fiber. This preference reduced the K21's weight while increasing the power-weight ratio, mobility, speed and payload capacity. The front arches of the hull and the turret are resistant to 30mm armor-piercing discarding sabot munition. The vehicle also has all-round protection against 14.5mm armor-piercing incendiary rounds and 20mm fragment-simulating projectiles. The K21's roof is resistant to 152mm artillery shell splinters. The fuel tank has a self-sealing feature. The survivability is enhanced by combined laser warning UV sensors. The vehicle has an automatic fire suppression system for crew and engine compartments and can be operated in CBRN environment. The K21's battle management system improves their situational awareness, increasing survivability further. On the other hand, there is no official confirmation about the special measurements of the vehicle against landmines. Considering its combat weight, it seems that the K-21 has lesser landmine protection compared to the latest Western counterparts. The K-21 has a fully stabilized two-person turret. The commander sits on the left while the gunner is on the right. These two crew members have the same Samsung Thales-made sight, which includes a thermal viewer and a laser rangefinder. Thus, the gunner can switch to the commander's sight in case of malfunction. Also, the commander can take control of the turret and gun from the gunner depending on the tactical situation, which gives the vehicle hunter-killer engagement capability. 
The SNT Dynamics Made 40mm K40 Cannon is a locally improved version of the Bufoish 40mm L70. Thanks to the advanced fire control system and gun stabilizer, the gun can engage moving targets accurately while the K21 is on the move. Its rate of fire is 300 rounds per minute. On the other hand, the K21 carries 240 40mm munition. The double-fed automatic loading system holds 24 rounds. There are other ready-to-load 24 40mm rounds in the rear part of the turret basket's floor. The carousel-type magazine at the bottom of the turret basket contains 80 pieces of ammunition which can be directly transferred to the automatic loader when necessary. The remaining reserve ammunition is located under the commander's seat. The empty cases are ejected from over the roof's front right. The 40mm K237 armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding sabot tracer munition can penetrate up to 220mm thick armor. The 40mm K236 MMFA programmable munition is the licensed production variant of the Bufoish 3P. It can be fired in several modes including proximity, air burst, armor piercing and fragmentation configured by the fire control system before firing. The K236 MMFA's pre-fragmented warhead contains 1,100 tungsten balls with a diameter of 3 mm. The gun is also effective against low-flying aerial targets. The K21's network-centric warfare-capable battle management system, including GPS, inertial navigation system and built-in diagnostics, also increases combat capability dramatically. The driver who sits on the front left of the hull and controls the vehicle via a T-bar has a large display showing engine data. The footage of the rear camera for reverse driving is also displayed on this screen. There is a forward-looking infrared camera to the left of the driver's hatch and a CCD camera next to the right headlight. The K211 has a semi-active in-arm suspension unit also used on the K2 Black Panther main battle tank. On the other hand, the vehicle cannot change its ground clearance like the K2. This suspension unit helps reduce overall weight while increasing mobility. The output of a standard diesel engine decreases by about 10% for every 1000 meters of altitude. Yet, the Korean Peninsula is mountainous. So, the K21's engine is fitted with a turbocharger, which reduces the output loss to 2% for every 1000 meters. The vehicle has a continuously variable transmission. Unlike conventional transmissions, it provides a limited number of gear ratios in the fixed steps which allows the engine to operate at a constant angular velocity while the vehicle moves at varying speeds. Thanks to its pantoon system, the K21 is amphibious with a water speed of 7 km per hour. The K21 has a 3-person crew consisting of a commander, gunner and driver and can carry 9 infantry. The vehicle has a length of 6.9 meters, a width of 3.4 meters, and a height of 2.6 meters. Its combat weight is 25.6 tons. The 750 horsepower Tucson D2840 LXC turbocharged diesel engine provides a road speed of 70 km per hour. Its range is 500 km. The K21 has one 40mm K20 cannon and one 7.62mm K6 quark seal machine gun. South Korea is now working on an improved version of the K21 called K21 PIP. The new variant will include an active protection suite and hard kill anti-missile system. It will also be fitted with the LIG Nex-1 AT-1K Raybolt 3rd generation anti-tank guided missile. This fire and forget capable missile has an infrared imaging seeker guidance system. Thanks to its tandem warhead, the Raybolt can penetrate 900mm thick armor supported with explosive reactor armor plates. It has top attack and drag attack modes and a range of 2500 meters. The K21 PIP will also be equipped with an 840 horsepower engine. The recovery repair variant of the K21 will have the same engine as the K21 PIP. In 2013, South Korea unveiled the K21's medium tank version with the XC8 turret which can be fitted with a 105mm or 120mm gun. One year later, the K21-105, another medium tank version of the K21 fitted with a Kukril CTCV-105 HP turret was unveiled. Even though these variants have not found a customer yet, 
the AS21 Redback version, has been chosen by Australia. The vehicle which won the Australian Army's Land 400 Phase 3 tender against the Rheinmetall's Lynx KF-41 has quite different features from the original K-21. The AS-21 has a Plasson-made additional armor package and the Albert-made Iron Fist Active Protection System to increase survivability. The vehicle also has the EOS T-2000 turret based on the Albert MT-30 Mark II with a 30mm ATK Mark 44S Bushmaster II Auto Cannon and a 7.62mm Mach 58 Quaxial machine gun. The turret is also fitted with the Rafael Spike LR2 anti-tank guided missile system and the EOS R400 remote control weapon station. All these changes increase the combat weight to 42 tons. So, the vehicle is equipped with the 1000 horsepower MTU MT881 KA500 diesel engine with an Allison transmission. Still, the top speed decreases to 65 km per hour. Australia initially planned to produce 450 Redback locally to replace its M113 AS4 fleet. This number was reduced to 129. The first vehicle will be delivered in 2027. Since North Korea has no armored vehicles with thick armor and heavy weapons, why did South Korea prefer such a powerful 40mm gun for the K-21? As mentioned, the ROKA expected the Korean People's Army would acquire or copy the latest Soviet equipment in the 1990s. So, it was a preparation for the future. Besides, the K-237 armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding sub-tracer munition which can penetrate up to 220mm thick armor from a 1000m distance was a logical preference since North Korea Army had many T-55s and T-62 based Chan Maos. The T-55 had a 250mm frontal and 70mm side armor. So, a 40mm round could penetrate this tank's armor within a considerable distance. Even though it was ineffective against the Chan Mahao's frontal armor, the K-40 could still penetrate this tank's side armor. So, the 40mm gun has been a sensible choice. Besides, the K-21 will soon have the AT-1K Raybolt anti-tank missiles, making the vehicle a sizable opponent of the latest North Korean tanks. Why did South Korea not prefer an innovative 40mm gun firing telescoped ammunition? Indeed, such weapons and munitions have certain advantages. However, they are still new and a few countries have chosen them. This situation have also caused some handicaps. The limited user number makes the munition considerably expensive. Besides, the fact that only a limited number of manufacturers produce them might cause supply problems in a possible war. And even though telescope ammunition is perfect on paper, it has not been battle tested. It has the risk of unanticipated shortcomings. So, there is nothing wrong here that South Korea has chosen the proven and smoothly available old-style 40mm gun and ammunition. While the rest of the world is preparing a new type of warfare, South Korea needs weapon systems designed for all total war doctrines. Current modern armies rely on battalion or even company-sized battle groups. They prefer heavily armored vehicles to minimize soldier loss. Many military planners think that their armies would not fight for survival. In the worst case scenario, they would withdraw from the area as France did in Mali or the USA in Afghanistan. This is not an option for the South Koreans in a possible new Korean war. So, being aware that there is no option for winning such a war without heavy losses, the ROKA is preparing for a maneuver war. So, the K-21 prioritized mobility rather than protection. Besides, the high mobility is also a factor that increases survivability. As we see in Ukraine, prioritizing the small combat groups and protection are also invalid in the war in this region. Neither Russia nor Ukraine can win with small unit actions. An old-style war might cause heavy losses, but one of the parties would probably have won. Even though the K-21 won the Australian tender, it lost in the USA and Poland. These countries have different doctrines, threat perceptions, and requirements than South Korea. Also, they have the national capability to design an infantry fighting vehicle. So, it is unsurprising that the USA and Poland did not choose the K-21.
The world is changing and the second Cold War is rising. For many countries, the K21 is among the soundest options in the new order. After all, the world is not just the USA and Western Europe. Different geographies require different solutions. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.